Hi, and in today's tutorial I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to create a slightly more abstract piece of art in Photoshop. Now I've got a selected image here and you can select any image you like but ideally you want something minimalist and something that you would like to repeat over and over again and then you can go ahead and make small changes like changes to the colour and I've just selected an A4 size piece of paper but you can select any size you like depending on how you want this to look. So I've selected my image and I've got it on a separate layer here and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the size of it so I'm going to hit my transform tool by command or control T and then I'm going to reduce the size of this. Now ideally I want three of these across my page and then five rows of this door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it, just pop it in the corner there, just click OK with this checkbox at the top, and then I'm going to go to my Move tool, which is this tool here, or you can hit the V button on your keyboard. I'm going to hold my Alt key down, and I'm going to click and drag. And that makes a new image on a new layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat that and make a third picture. Now the reason we don't worry too much about our canvas is because if we like the size of these images as they are, all we need to do is to hit the C key or go to the crop tool, which is this icon here, and once these markers appear at the edge of your canvas, just pull out the sides to fit your images. Now, once you're happy, just click OK. Now, if you want your images to fit A4, then you obviously have to resize them down so that they fit your A4 page. But here, I'm not so worried about the size of my canvas because then I can reduce it at the end if I want to. So at the bottom here, our layer is not all white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a solid fill color from this icon here, go down to solid fill. Apologies, you can't see it. But you'll see it when it crops up. And then on the color picker tool, we've got our cursor right at the top corner here into white and click OK. And the whole of your background will be white. And then we can just get rid of this layer at the bottom. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to arrange these the way I want them. So for example, if I highlight this picture in the middle here, you can tell which picture it is because if you just switch on and off this eyeball here, you can see which layer we're talking about. So I'm just going to change this layer around. So if I select that layer, go to my transform tool, which is Command or Control T, and then right click, and go down to flip horizontal. And that will flip your picture around, so you don't always have to have the door on the right hand side. So now what I'm going to do is to make sure that all these images are neatly attached to each other. Next thing I'm going to do is just to move them all so they're nudged up together. So just using my move tool, I'm just going to make sure I'm on the right layer. So I should be on this middle layer here. And then I'm just going to move this one over so it joins that other image to the left. Then zoom out, zoom back in. And then with this one, you can see it's this layer here. Grab that layer and then move it together. So I now know that all of these images are perfectly lined up together. If I'm happy with that, then I can go ahead and group them, which will make this process a lot quicker. So again, holding down my Command or Control key, I will select all of the layers and then press Command or Control G to group them. Once they're grouped and you're on your Move tool again, you can also use the Alt or Option key to click and drag and make copies. So you don't have to go through the entire process all over again. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to go back to that top layer and move it to the top. And then to the next layer. And then move that up and then zoom in 
to make sure that's all perfectly aligned. And then I'm just going to repeat that process. You can either grab this group here and drag it to the plus sign at the bottom, or you can use the Alt key method, which I find to be a lot quicker. And then again, move that up. Oh, that's not quite lined up. There we go. Then use the Alt key again, click and drag. Perfect. So now we've got all of our images. Now don't forget, you don't have to do it with this image. There's a lot more images out there that you can access if you want to, or you can take your own image. It's entirely up to you. But to make this a little bit more interesting, we can go in and we can flip these images around and we can also change the color. So let's say, for example, we want to change this door around here. So we need to be on this layer. And the quickest and easiest way to make sure you're on the right group, because obviously you can see here, we've got lots and lots of groups. You can use your command or control key whilst you're on the move tool and just click. And that will open up the group. And obviously we clicked on the middle image, so it's highlighted that image that we actually clicked on. So you know you're in this group and we've highlighted this image. If I wanted to go down the bottom here, I would do the same, hold the command or control key down and click. And once again, we're on the correct group and the correct image. So let's say, let's flip this image. So we've selected the layer, go to the transform tool, command or control T, right click, go all the way down to flip horizontal. Apologies, you can't see it. And then click the checkbox at the top or hit enter. And now you can go through the whole of your images here and just flip the ones you want to just change up your image a little bit. So again, command or control and hit that image there. I'm on the layer, command or control T, transform, right click, flip horizontal. Okay, so once you're happy where all of your doors are, you can have them around the other way, it's completely up to you. We can go ahead and start changing some colors. So let's just say we want to change the color of this door here. Again, make sure you're on your move tool, command or control key and select that image. And Photoshop has selected that image for us. Now what we need to do is select a hue saturation layer. So in your adjustments tab here, if you can't see this, go up to window and select adjustments. In here, you've got your hue saturation adjustment layer. So let's just click on hue saturation. So we don't want this to apply to all of our images. We only want it to apply to the one below, which is this layer here. So now we need to make what's called a clipping mask. So if we select this icon here, what will happen is this little arrow will appear and every adjustment we make will only apply to this image below it. So let's just zoom in. So now if I change the hue and saturation, let's just change the hue. You can see it's only applying to that image. So what we want to do is just select the greens of this image and change those. So if we select this little slider here, selection tool, and just put the eyedropper tool over the green and click. Now these two little bars here refer to the color that you're going to change. And these little arrows at the end are the sort of feathering. So it will also adjust those colors outside that, but not as much as the colors within this area here. So if I move these out, it means I will select more of the greens to change the color. So then when I go up to the hue slider here and I move it, let's say to the right, it's only changing the greens. So at the bottom here, you can see that it selected the greens and those greens, it's changed this color here, which is the blues. Now here it can get a little sketchy because if we zoom in, we can see that it's a little bit patchy. 
Now if we move the feathering tool over to the left, it will pick up a little bit more of those greens. And likewise here over to the right. So once you're happy with the colour you've selected, you can go up and just get rid of this dialog box by using this cross here. You can use the same process all over this image. So don't forget, all you need to do is hold your command or control key down to select your particular image and then just create your hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to the image below and then go ahead and just make those final adjustments. Don't forget you can use the other saturation and lightness sliders to fully adjust the colours to your liking. Okay, so once you're happy with everything, we're just going to close all of these groups down so we don't get confused. And then what we will do is grab all the groups, hold your shift key down, click on the bottom one here, hold your shift key down and click on the top one and we've selected all of the images and all of the groups. Now again, hold command or control down and hit G to group the whole lot. So now we've just got one big group. What it does allow us to do now, having selected our move tool, is to move everything round as one. Now of course what you can do is you can crop your image so that you can just select the images or you can have a white border, it's completely up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the crop tool, which is this icon here. So I'm just going to put mine onto width and height resolution. And then as I click and drag, it allows me to crop to whatever size I need and it would not maintain the ratio. Crop up to the bottom here, crop to the side and again and click OK. You see at the bottom I've got a little bit of a line so let's zoom in. It's just if you've selected the crop tool and the markers aren't coming up, just click on the image and they'll appear. And once again, we'll just drag this up. If you hold down the control key, it will give you a little bit more control over what you're selecting. There we go. And then just hit the enter key. And then zoom out. See the same's happen with the side here. So again, we'll just move that in and hit the checkbox or the enter key. Perfect. So now you have a little bit of abstract artwork. You can, do, as I said before, you can do this with lots of different images. You can change the colors, you can change the size, you can change the hue. It really is up to you. So I hope that's given you a little bit of an overview today about how you can create this kind of artwork in Photoshop. If it has helped, please subscribe and have a great day.